Hi guys, welcome back to Worms Mass Academy. Uh, right now we're going to be looking at uh, gradient graphs. So, I um, just want to check and make sure I haven't missed anything. Okay, so graphs of our gradient. Um, one of the most common things I ask in, in exams is, um, they might ask you is when a gradient's positive, when a gradient's negative, but they don't say when is the gradient positive. They say, come on you stupid thing. They say when is dy dx greater than zero? And you look at that, dy dx is gradient. Greater than zero means positive. Okay, so that's what they're saying. When is the gradient positive? When does it have an increasing slope? Here, when is the gradient equal to zero? Well, of course, that's when it's flat, so when it's a stationary point. And then when is dy dx? dy dx is our gradient. When is that less than zero? Well, that just means if something's less than zero, then it has to be negative. <clears throat> So when you see these questions, it's best off instead of saying when is dy dx greater than zero, you just say when is the gradient positive, when is the gradient zero, when is the gradient negative, and it makes things so much easier. So here, if I've got a function, I don't know what the function is, but it says when is the gradient positive, well we know the gradient is positive there, because it's increasing and there. So we can say when x is from negative infinity up until negative 1 or 7 to infinity. At the turning point it's not increasing or it's not it's not um, positive it's just 0. So here when is the gradient negative, that's what that means. So when is the gradient negative? Well, it's between those two values. So from negative one to seven. So X is an element of um, negative one to seven. We don't include the endpoints. And of course, when does it equal zero? So gradient is zero and that's at X is an element of it's either negative one or seven. It's not an interval, it's just those particular values, so that's why we do it in squiggly brackets. Okay, this is methods exam um, two from 2017. So it says part of the graph uh, of a polynomial function f and the coordinates of its stationary points are shown below f dash of x is less than zero for the interval. So here, if we say the gradient is negative for where, well, we know it's from there down to there. So from negative three to five on three. So that's our answer. Doesn't include the endpoints. Nice, easy answer. Okay, let's also have a look at strictly increase and strictly decreasing functions. So if they use the word strictly, they added this in in 2011. If they use the word strictly, um, they're in, you're including the endpoints, like where the gradient zero, in being increasing or decreasing. So a function is strictly decreasing when it's not increasing and it's strictly increasing when it's not decreasing. So basically in terms of a function, when we're asked if a function is strictly increasing or decreasing, we include points of zero gradient. Um, so if we have a look here, if we have a function, so the way I'd explain it is, if we have an, a function that looks like this, that's gonna go up forever. If I said to you, when is this function, to say this point here is negative one, for what values is this strictly increasing? So if we get to this point there, which is the turning point, negative one, 
if f of negative 1 is less than um, f of negative 0 0.999, so the point right next to it, then we include the point 1 in being increasing. So like here and here, if I have this point and this point, because the point to the right of it produces a value that's greater than that point, um, we say that it's increasing between those two points, so we include that end point. If I had a point here, and then I choose a point to the right, like a small point, so there and there, you can see here, if I had this point and I choose a point to the right, well, that point there, it's decreased, so it's not increasing. Um, I'm just trying to think. So basically what you want to prove is that if you've got a point on a graph, there's a point on a graph, where if there's a point to the right of it, where it goes up, then this point is said to be strictly increased, included when it's strictly increasing. If I move to the left of the turning point, that would be above that value. And we couldn't say that F of, we'll call that A, B and C. We can't say that F of A is less than F of B. Um, so that's no longer, that's decreasing now, it's not increasing. But, okay, so let's zoom in on a spot. If I had a curve like this, if I choose a point, that's the turning point. If I choose a point just to the right of it, we'll call that A, call that B. We can say that, where's this stupid bloody, we can say that F of B is greater than F of A, because our Y value is greater than our Y value, and B is greater than A. <coughs> So that means strictly increasing from A to infinity because it continues going up forever. If I chose another point C, we put it here, F of C is greater than um, F of A and C is less than A. So here, because they're both greater than, and we say it's strictly increasing, but here, this is decreasing because C is less than A. So that means that this side is decreasing, whereas this side is increasing. We include this point because by the definition, you include the turning point <coughs> um, when a function is strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. Basically, the main thing you want to take from it is if a function is strictly increasing, you include the turning points, zero gradient, and if it's strictly decreasing, you also include the turning points. Let's try and make some sense of it here. Um, okay, I've got a function. When does f of x equal zero? So we can factorize that. 3x x 2x. This HP pen is crap. You can't find the little button to push. Um, it's like it doesn't actually exist. And then I've got equals zero. Okay, three twos. No, we want a two there and a one there. I want them both to be negative. 6x squared minus 3x minus 4x is minus 7x plus 2. Um, so x is equal to two thirds or one half, f of x equals two, six x squared minus seven x plus two equals zero. It doesn't equal zero, it equals two. They'll cancel each other out. We can take out x as a common factor here. So x, six x minus seven equals zero, x equals zero or seven on six f dash of x equals zero, so find f dash of x, that is 12x minus 7 equals zero, so x equals 7 on 12. When is f of x strictly increasing? So from here, we know that this function at 7 on 12, it's a turning point because the gradient zero, and we know it's a positive x squared, so it's got to go up like this. 
So when is it strictly increasing? Well, it's strictly increasing for x as an element of, we include the turning point, so it's square bracket 7 on 12 to infinity. When is it strictly decreasing? Well, it's strictly decreasing up until here. We include that point, so x as an element of negative infinity up until 7 on 12. Okay, so we're strictly increasing. Basically, you in, oops, that was supposed to be a square bracket, I just realized. So there's 7 on 12, it includes it. So if I ask you when it's strictly increasing here, when it's strictly, sorry, when it's strictly decreasing, it's here. And when it's strictly increasing, um, we include the turning point for both cases. Whenever you see the word strictly. Okay. Um. I mean, we can, we can diff with negative power, so I might as well do it now. Um, when you've got a negative power, the first thing you should do is rewrite, when you've got a an x in the denominator, um, make it have negative powers and then differentiate, then put it back. So here, this is already in that, because here that would be 2x to the negative 2. So here f of x is 2x minus 2 down to the front makes it plus 4x and we take one away from the power, negative 3. That's it. However, I'm suggesting rewrite it with positive indices. So 2x plus 4 on x to the 3. The reason is when you substitute something into it, um, if I said to you here x equals 2, if I put 2 into that, or if I put 2 into that, without a calculator, the second one's much easier to evaluate. Because if you put it into the first one, you'd have 2 times 2, plus 4, 2 to the negative 3. And most people don't know what to do with 2 to the negative 3. However, if I had f, I've got the dash, f dash of 2, I get 2 times 2, plus 4 on, 2 cubed, which is 4, plus 4 on 8, which is a half, so 4 and a half. Okay, here this is already written with positive, with negative powers, so there's nothing on the bottom, so we don't have to do anything. f dash of x, bring your 3 down to the front, we get positive 12, x to the negative 4. Bring your 4 down to the front, we get negative 20x to the 3, and then plus 3. Of course, we could write this as 12 on x to the 4 minus 20x cubed plus 3. If I've got 5 on x squared, like I said, rewrite it with a negative power, so 5x to the negative 2. dy dx is equal to negative 10x to the negative 3, because I bring my negative 2 down to the front and then I subtract on from the power. That's negative 10 on x cubed. Here, rewrite this. y is equal to x to the 4 on x to the 3 minus 3x squared on x to the 3. These two here are going to give me x. These two here are going to give me 3 on x or 3x to the negative 1 because we subtract the powers. dy dx, I get 1. Bring your minus down to the front, we're going to get plus 3, and that would be x to the negative 2, which is 1 plus 3 on x squared. You could also put that on a common denominator, x squared plus 3 on x squared. Okay, so it follows exactly the same rule um, as previously, but we've just got to make sure whenever we've got a positive, whenever we've got something on the bottom with an x, we've got to make sure we put it on top and then diff it. So y is equal to x to the negative 2 plus 2x. So dy dx, when I derive that, negative 2x take 1 away, negative 3. Plus when I derive 2x, I just get 2, which we can say is negative 2 on x cubed plus 2. Okay, when I sub in 1, because we want it at 1, dy dx given x equals 1. 
that's going to give me negative 2 on 1 cubed plus 2 negative 2 plus 2 0 it's got a gradient of 0 okay show that the derivative um, of the function f for all real numbers except for 0 of this function is always negative so we could do this a few ways um, so show that the derivative function, so we could say f dash of x is negative 3 x to the negative 4, which is negative x, negative 3 on x to the 4. Um, we can say as x to the 4 is always positive, negative 3 divided by a positive number will always b as x to the 4 is always is greater than we should say is 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 greater than 0 for x as an element of all reals except for 0 which is this thing here negative 3 and a positive number will always be negative therefore dy dx is always less than 0 or, well, or we could sketch dy dx, negative 3 on x squared. So if we sketch that, it's going to look like x to the power of 4, sorry. It's still going to look like this. So here you can just say um, dy dx is less than 0 for all x is an element for all reals except for 0 because it's not defined at 0. We know that that's like a truncus that's been inverted because uh, 1 on x to the 4, well 1 on x squared looks like that, 1 on x to the 4 is very similar. So you can always chuck it in your cas if you need to. Okay so that's derivatives with negative powers and also strictly increasing and decreasing functions. I'll see you later.